Cacau. four sets there in total. Started off with around 40, 16 repetitions on the lighter set and finished with about eight repetitions and a couple of half reps there on the heavier set there. You know when if you don't have a spot especially just knock out a few half reps at the top so you can really still work the top contraction and the inner portion of your pecs and uh, you know, make sure that you know when you as you doing your lighter sets, you only need to rest probably about for about a minute, minute and a half. When you're doing your heavier sets, it makes sense for you to replenish your ATP and uh, work your type 1 muscle fibers. So I'd recommend maybe about three to four minutes rest between your heavier sets, especially with a larger muscle group, such as your chest, back and legs. I'm doing a negative here, I'm going down at a relatively slow pace, but then I'm exploding out the hole. The pecs are designed for an explosive manner, I think, when it comes to that, those sort of movements. You know, you think about it, pecs, triceps, quads, you know, they're, they're generally used for more explosive actions as opposed to like back or biceps, pulling muscles. So just to really fire those type 1 muscle fibers, I like to incorporate a little bit of faster concentric and a little bit slower now, eccentric. Alright, using a resistance band now around my back as a little bit of extra resistance because I don't have a training partner here to put plates on my back or anything like that. So what I'll generally do is uh, have this resistance band around my back. Got a couple of Reebok steps here so I can go a little bit further than uh, parallel. So I'm in a deficit there. And uh, again, this will just really help me stretch out the muscle fibers in the pecs. And I think the more that you can stretch the fascia and the more that you can stretch the muscle fibers, the more blood flow that you can get into the area and the fuller that you can get your pecs. filming so yeah well it's a nice little mercedes amg yeah. that i've got under my arm so i have to push it a little bit hopefully uh i almost shit my pants right there <laughs> maybe i did yeah but it's a nice little brum brum isn't it? Yeah. that's why i never ever buy fast cars anymore i will not because i get so many speeding tickets i had to do um what do you call it defensive driving yeah, I had to do some sort of course in the UK because I got done so many bloody times. And I 
that's what I thought. Continue on Islington Avenue just have for to two buy a vehicle that's uh, much slower. <laughs> because I don't know that I'm speeding a lot. Of them. Okay. Are you speeding now? Dad. Just sounds really yeah. nice, doesn't it? <laughs> Dr. Dwayne Jackson, you do have a nice vehicle, but you must have a little penis to be driving a car like this, man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I know, I relate. <laughs> right. Do you know how to get out of the car? Yeah, apparently so. Don't know if I can. I make noises. Oh. <laughs> That's a wrap for uh, today's filming, but we have one more thing to shoot. Oh, that's all. Yeah. Oh, we've got to turn this camera around. Okay, we are on Chris Gethin here with Dr. Dwayne Jackson. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Because some of you may or may not know who I am, but for those of you who do not know, come on over here. We're doing a live feed here on both Facebook and on Instagram live here on Cage Muscle Platforms. So do you want to explain a little bit about yourself, Dr. Dwayne Jackson, let these kids know who you are? Absolutely. Uh, so my name is uh, Dr. Dwayne Jackson. Uh, I am the scientific director for Cage Muscle and uh, I'm actually responsible for most of the uh, educational content that you guys are uh, putting together. And uh, yeah, I'm here to answer any questions that anybody has about any of our products um, in any way, shape or form. And let us know exactly what your background is and what you're currently doing. How long have you been doing what you're doing right now, currently? Certainly. Um, yeah, so I uh, did my bachelor's degree uh, about, uh, about in the uh, early 90s uh, at University of Ottawa in Canada. Uh, then I went down to, I'm uh, sorry, I did my master's there too, my bachelor's and master's. Then I went down to Yale University to start my PhD and uh, spent a little time down there doing some research. And actually, that's where I hooked up with Jim Stepani. And then I went back up to Canada to finish up my, uh, my, uh, my PhD sorry, at Western University. Uh, and then headed back down to Yale University for a postdoctoral uh, fellowship. And, uh, and then eventually was recruited back to Canada at the medical school at University of Western Ontario. So what are you currently doing there now at that medical school? So we've got a pretty large laboratory in uh, vascular biology. And uh, we also study some of the effects of uh, sympathetic nerves on uh, breast cancer. And then what we're going to do is grab a scoop of your favorite protein, which is obviously going to be your recaged. Okay, so we've got a full scoop there, and we're just going to pour it into the water. And then we're just going to give this a very quick stir, okay? So just going to stir that in, like so. And maybe I should move the, the phone so you can actually see this. So all I've done is just stirred that very quickly and you can see, I'm going to see if I can do both photos at the same time here, that is completely dissolved. Completely dissolved in the water. Okay? So if you actually try that same mixture, try mixing your whey protein or like a whey protein blend, for instance, see what happens. Now, what does this tell you if you're actually putting a recage into a glass like that, not even using a shaker bottle, and it completely dissolves? Yeah, so there's a few actual advantages to um, having a product that's uh, so soluble. Um, the, first, the first is that uh, the solubility um, will determine the viscosity of the fluid. And this is very, very thin, as you can see. Okay, now one of the things we do know is that the thinner the medium, the more uh, quickly and the more completely things will get absorbed by your intestines. So um, in the case of uh, recage, this is a very thin um, fluid, okay, uh, just a little bit thicker than water. Um, so you can expect this to digest much quicker than other, other products that are, that are thick. So, you know, you could use the compounded chart of, say, a creatine HGL and a creatine monohydrate. If you do the same thing, if you've got creatine monohydrate at home and like the cage muscle creatine HCL, 
put them together and add the creatine HDL to a solution, creatine monohydrate, and you'll notice the contrasting differences of the monohydrate sinking to the bottom and settling there, whereas the creatine HDL will completely dissolve in water with a couple of stirs. So it's the same sort of thing. And that's why a lot of people who uh, take monohydrate, including myself, experiences far more negatives that outweigh the positives, such as you know, a little bit of nausea, stomach bloating, gas, and diarrhea as well. And that's because the particle sizes just are not getting them absorbed by the, the stomach line. That, that's right, yeah. So, so uh, with our creatine HCL, um, as you know, it dissolves quite easily, and it's actually very, very soluble. Um, it actually acts uh, quite like the, the fluid content in your stomach. So when you have that condition, then um, the, the substrates move much easier across the, uh, the membranes and into the blood so that you can circulate better. Now if you think about it, your um, plasma is like water yeah. in the blood. So you want these amino acids and, and all these substrates that are in, say, reagage, creatine, and, uh, and these things to uh, dissolve eat readily in water because that's exactly what they're doing in your body. Okay, all right, gotcha. So then, okay, we all know that a lot of people are promoting other forms of protein post-workout, especially. Now, they could be milk protein isolates, they could be whey protein concentrates, and the big one is blends, protein blends, which has never made any sense, really, if you have a compound effect of a fast digesting protein. We all want to take advantage of that window of opportunity. We want to recover damaged muscle tissue that we've basically broken down within the gym pretty much immediately correct so when people are actually taking a blend which is a far slower protein and larger fractions to be absorbed into the system I always think we might as well be eating a food you know if it's going to take a certain amount of time for it to get absorbed so this gets absorbed by the stomach pretty much immediately you know you'll notice after taking recage you're hungry within half an hour you know well, you can eat food yeah, and one, one other thing to, to really note um, with Recaged is that it contains prohydrolase, which is an enzyme that breaks down the whey protein, the solid, the, the complete whey proteins, into um, small tripeptides and amino acids. So they actually go into the blood much easier. These are small fragments that uh, create an anabolic response which is faster than uh, full fragments of protein. So um, we've included that in Recaged so that actually, um, although it is a whey isolate that we use in the blend, or sorry, in the actual pro, as a protein, um, the prohydrolase breaks that down to a hydrolyse or a hydrolysate. Okay, so okay. that makes it even easier for the body to absorb. That's right. Yep. So we're actually creating the first digestive path when you add it to water. Exactly. And that's why we can get it into the blood so quickly is because um, you've already started digestion in the glass. Right, okay. Like, I've used this analogy before uh, that Brian has told me, where he says, you think about trying to move furniture in its complete form through that door. You have to first, though, take off the legs, take off the, the platform, remove parts of it to get through the door, and then you have to kind of rebuild it again before it's structured, before it can have some sort of uh, use. It's the same with the proteins. These exactly. protein fractions are way too big. They have to be completely broken down, which takes like 19 minutes. If we're talking about a whey protein blend, for instance, we've kind of missed that window of opportunity there. Absolutely, because um, the, I mean, the evidence does show us that after exercise, the faster you can get amino acids up in the blood, the better the anabolic response, which is what we all want, because we want muscle growth. Yeah, and we want to optimize our recovery, because I always say, like, if you can only optimize your recovery by say 85, 90%, then what are you gonna expect the next day? Well, when you're trying to perform and lift your heaviest lifts or you know, run your fastest run, you're only gonna be able to optimize that performance by say 85 to 90% because you've only recovered by that much. Your performance is basically dictated by your recovery. So that's why you need to recover immediately after your workout because you only have a window of time before you're gonna go back into the gym expecting to perform yet again. So why is it that a lot of companies and a lot of people are promoting other types of protein, specifically more so blends? A lot of companies are promoting blends. Yeah, but blends actually aren't anything new. Um, they were around in the uh, late 90s, uh, 2000s. Um, blends are uh, a more affordable way to put together a protein source. Um, they, they're made up of um, cheaper sources of protein, like uh, whey concentrates, uh, milk protein concentrates, these kind of things. Isolates, and, 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 and some milk isolates. 
So um, now there is, uh, there is merit in some blends. There, there is some evidence to show us that, that um, blends are um, a, a good thing to have during the day. They're a nice thing in between meals, yeah. these kind of things. But um, ideally, we really want to get those broken down amino acid fragments into the blood as fast as possible after exercise. After and the best way to do that is with um, a hydrolyzed whey, um, or even better, with recaged. Yeah, exactly. And that's what we're talking about here. Different protein sources are required for different times of the day. Like if I want to have a protein during the day, I will generally have half a scoop of recage and half a scoop of casein and have that mixture. Yeah. If I'm having carbohydrates in that meal, great, I'll have some oats. You know, but specifically post-workout, I won't really, or any other time of the day, I won't really have any other protein other than recaged immediately post-workout because that is my go-to protein specifically for that time. Anyway, guys, we have been going on a bit, so hopefully that has given you a little bit of an insight. Now, remember, we are talking both on the Facebook Live and the Instagram Live here on the Cage Muscle platform, so we will do our very best to answer some questions here. So, uh, let's see, what questions do we have? Any plans on making a larger size recage for us? Maybe in the future, but what I always tell everybody is all you gotta do is buy like three, four, five tubs. That's what I personally do. If you, you know, if you find that you go through it a little bit quick, just buy it more tubs. Remember, it is priced per serving. So if we have larger container, it's not gonna make it any cheaper for you. What do you suggest pre-workout if you are sensitive to caffeine? Okay, well there's a couple of single fill ingredients that you can use here. You can use a citrulline, obviously you can have like six, six to eight grams of citrulline. You can use the creatine HCL, you can mix that in with a hydrocharge, so you've got your electrolytes, you've got your antioxidants, getting ready for that free radical damage that's about to appear. And if you like, you can break off uh, some, uh, uh, a, 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 um, not citrulline, a carn carnitine pill and throw that in there along with some branch chain amino acids. Um, Rav says the best protein according to me are egg whites times six. What do you say to that? Well, I mean egg whites were the uh, gold standard um, for, for many years until uh, we, we found out all the value in whey. Um, now we do know that the biological value of eggs is, uh, is considered uh, top, top standard. Um, but whey is actually just a little bit better. So uh, we, we actually uh, like, like whey protein um, as a post-exercise uh, uh, protein supplement, but also as a daily protein supplement above egg, um, just because it's a little bit higher biological value. Yeah, the BV's a little bit higher, but you know, first thing in the morning, if you want a solid food, then definitely egg whites is a way Ab to go. Absolutely, in fact, I eat, I, I eat at least six or eight a day of yeah. eggs, so, so um, I, and that's the first thing in the morning. Um, but as, as a whole food, great stuff. Um, but if you're talking about supplements, uh, you'll find that if you use whey protein, you'll, your <clears throat> blood amino acids will elevate much quicker um, than we think. Yeah, okay. So Jim31 says, any of your products help with weight loss? Do you want to elaborate? Well, Clean Burn is one of the, one of the best ones I can think of that come to mind. Um, <clears throat> Clean Burn contains uh, no caffeine, which is, which is kind of nice for those of you that are uh, sensitive to caffeine. But it does have uh, our l carnitine in it. Um, it does have. <laughs> if you got a bottle of right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as you can see, we've got we've got our l carnitine uh, Carnipure um, at a gram uh, per serving. Uh, green tea extract. Okay, and that that our green tea extract. Um, one thing you have to look at when you're looking at a label with green tea extract is uh, the catechins or the e uh, EGCG that's um, in it. And we, uh, we do standardize ours to 95% uh, polyphenols, 80% catechins, and 50% and, and uh, uh, EGCG. Um, we've also got uh, Gymnema Sylvester extract, which uh, helps with uh, the, the sugar absorption and sugar cravings, so this is kind of nice. Um, and then also Capsimax, uh, which is uh, the uh, capsaicin extract, but it's encapsulated in um, a special enteric coating that allows you to get a lot of this capsaicin in your stomach without causing stomach discomfort that you get if you ate a bunch of chili peppers or habaneros or something. Um, this is a, this is the top recommendation. I use this daily. Okay, and you can if you want caffeine with that, obviously you can add the pure caf uh, to that. So, what is your recommendation for an easy tolerated gastro wise? Uh, during workout supplement for long distance runs. Now, if you're talking about protein, then it's gonna be recaged what we're talking about here today. Uh, when I completed my Ironman, 
But, oh, Sorry. that's your wife. Ah, you should know all about this. You I was like, hey, wait, my wife wants this to know is a that. trick question. Was, when I did my Iron Man, it was recaged. That was a protein that I was uh, taking in on the bike and specifically on the run. When you're running up and down in a vertical fashion, obviously it's harder to tolerate solid food. So that's why you go for the liquid. However, if you're just talking about supplementation without the protein, then that's when I went for the hydrocharge and branch chain amino acids is glued to me pretty much all the time. So I'm going to go for a run tomorrow. It's going to be like a 10 mile run, I think it is tomorrow. And that's, do you, that's do you ever take pre or that. anything for your runs? No, only like for instance in the Ironman or if I'm going for a long time, let's say if I'm, you know, I'm biking for like 100 miles, then I may have it on the ladder part. Other than that, maybe in cage, nothing as strong. Yeah. I'll have the sachet strapped to my bar yeah. and it's like a rip open in case of emergency. You know? Right. Uh, I keep lemon water in my fridge. Is it okay to take pr uh, pre and re with lemon water? Yeah, I can't see why not. Wow, we've got a lot of questions here. I'm going to scroll these down, guys. Awesome seminar yesterday. Thank you very much. Uh, I recent Rav says I recently had a tattoo on my forearm. Should I continue gymming? The tattoo artist asked me not to for at least ten days. Now, we've both had tattoos, and this is going to be completely up to you. Like, I've had tattoos, and pretty much every, like, either that very day or the day after, I still go straight to the gym. Same. Yeah, I'm not going to go away from the gym just because the tattoo has told me not to, you know, and it hasn't done anything adverse to it. It's just, these people just want to, you know, be careful for you. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I do the same, same. Um, I have had one problem with the tattoo working out, um, one that is up the inside of my armpit. And uh, it got infected, so. Oh really? Yeah, and, I, oh. And, that, and they blame that on working out. But, but right. other than that, I've got lots of tattoos, so everything has been fine so far. That you can click on for the ambassador program for you to sign up. Uh, let's see. Okay, is vegan protein as effective as whey protein? Okay, I don't know if you want to refer to this, but my personal opinion is no, it isn't. It isn't. You're not going to have the complete amino acid profile for you to be as anabolic as you would, you know, with, with, with a dairy protein, to be honest with you. That's my opinion. What, what's your opinion? And uh, that's the that's good, good opinion to have. In fact, it's scientifically relevant. Um, the branch chain amino acids are what make whey um, superior, anabolic, uh, superior as an anabolic agent. Um, high, high levels of leucine, isoleucine, valine. Uh, and, and unfortunately, vegetable proteins just don't have high BCAAs. Mm. I'm not saying, you know, we're not saying that you can't build muscle on uh, a vegan diet. However, it's going to be more beneficial. Not quite, not quite as effective as well. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, would it be better if I use hydrocharge instead of lemon water? Yes, it's going to be better because generally with a hydrocharge, you're going to have the electrolytes. You're going to have the five electrolytes from the tender coconut water powder. You're also going to have the spectra auric blend of antioxidants and you're going to have the one gram of taurine for your mental focus as well. Uh, is BCAAs worth it while you're bulking? Well, I would say they're necessary while you're bulking. Um, leucine actually is uh, completely obligatory uh, or necessary for anabolic drive. So, um, and leucine is one of the, uh, the most abundant BCAAs in, in our formulas. So uh, we, we do those at a two to one to one ratio. Uh, and the two being two times as much leucine as isoleucine and valine. So absolutely, yeah. very important. If you're an active person, whether you're dieting, whether you're bulking, whether you're looking for in performance, branch chain amino acids need to be a staple in, in your diet, basically, with your supplement regime. That's why you'll see me walking around with my gallon bodybuilder jug with my hydrocharged branch chain amino acids and fermented glutamine in there the entire day. <laughs> Off the day with an hour cardio here. I might stay to the bike exclusively, or I may just finish off a little bit on the treadmill. Just a run on tired legs. Get used to running on tired legs. May even throw a little bit of abs in there as well. Bit of a circuit, we'll see. Instinctive adaptation. <laughs> 